as you can see, there's no one here, which is really nice. So we turn on our chief competitor on the uh, television station, which is uh, WSOC, to make sure that they ha don't have something that we don't have. sign on and what I'll immediately do is start checking emails to make sure that uh, the police department hasn't said sent something that we want to get and there are a lot of clicking and places to go to find those it's never our readership doubles between uh, seven and eight o'clock to over a thousand and then it climbs you know throughout the midday and uh, my job is all about the web I spend about five minutes a day probably less actually talking about what we're gonna do in the print newspaper writing headlines for the web we recognize now that most people are experiencing us on social media right how do you start your day you've got your cup of coffee you got your phone you're scrolling through your Facebook feed Think about the kinds of things that will make you stop, stop scrolling through your Facebook feed and actually read a story. And so we work really hard now, uh, my colleagues and I here on the editing uh, desk and also the reporters uh, to write headlines on social media that will engage and make you stop. Uh, and it's really thinking about two things. Who's the audience for this story and what promise are we making them that they're gonna learn something when they read this story. For the first time ever we now know because of uh, the web and, and the technologies that come with it uh, who's reading, how many people are reading every single story and what stories are doing well so we want to make sure that, that, that the stories are, that are getting read are getting a decent uh, display on the web um, and also that we're looking for stories that we think are going to do better um, so one of the first things I do every morning is I see what our sister newspaper in Raleigh, uh, see what people are reading there because uh, if a story is doing well there, it might do well here as well. Right now, this is the number one story on our site. Um, what we want in the morning and all this stuff is usually stuff that was posted the night before. Our goal is to get the things we posted in the morning to be the better read stories. Anyway, what's really interesting is when you get one that they're spending uh, like a, almost a minute and a half reading that story, so it must be something they're very interested in. When I first got here in 2006, um, you know, the, the, the sort of the prize was to get on the front page of the newspaper. And now sort of the prize is to have the story that got most of the, the most page views online. Um, people don't care, even we don't care as much about a front page story anymore in the print product as we do about, hey, our story went viral. And, um, you know, a thousand people are reading it at the same time right now. Okay. What do you say the folks who say um, he's undocumented, he shouldn't be here, send him back. Well, here's the thing that citizens in this country need to understand, that the immigrants in this country contribute so much to their American dream. Mm -hmm. And just because something's legal doesn't make it right. Slavery was legal. Mm -hmm. Was that right? It's uh, definitely a win, uh, and it shows to people that when we unite, uh, the people who have uh, been calling nonstop for me, uh, Butterfield's office, uh, Immigration's office, uh, this is the, the result, you know. It was a, it's a definitely a win. I wouldn't be standing here with you uh, in front of you right now if it wasn't for, for all the people that have been supporting me. Hey, Doug, it's Gavin. Um, I am. It's all wrapped up. Um, he actually was released, so he's uh, uh, in the states with his uh, court case still pending. 
Uh, I'm curious, what do you want from the story? Are you looking for this to stand on its own, or are you looking to, for it to get combined with Tim's story, or what? I mean, it, it's cool with me. It can be, uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, 10 or 12 inches or so, like an example of uh, a guy fighting for his, uh, his stay here. Okay, and I, I know Davey's on his way back. Uh, he got some video and, and stills, so that should work out as well. We've learned a lot of skills that we didn't have before that actually are going to be pretty useful, obviously, um, in a short amount of time because of the way newspapers are changing, where everybody's sort of a one-man show. You go out and you take some of your own pictures and you shoot some of your own video and you come back and you're also a, expected to be a social media expert and figure out, you know, what the best way to present this story on Facebook or, you know, what's the best share text? How do we tweet this out with the, you know, with the, to maximize potential there? Subscribe to the facts. I think facts. has uh, some power to it. Yeah. If, you're, if you're doing the subscribe to, I would yeah. say subscribe to the facts. Yeah. Trust. 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 Accountability, but I think truth or investigations truth. are more. Most truth. People. Subscribe the truth. I was thinking of how to get it storytelling, like you know, inspiration or inspiring or something like that. Mm -hmm. Subscribe yeah. to trust. Subscribe to honesty. Subscribe to facts. Subscribe to investigation. Subscribe to truth. Subscribe to authenticity. Subscribe to accountability. Subscribe to here. Subscribe to here. Subscribe to now. Subscribe to boom. You know the the so you're switching kind of yes, the framing right. of it. Right. But then you build a little drama in it too. Right. Truth. Yeah. Truth. Investigations. The, or the facts. Investigation. Charlotte. I mean, I like hitting home, mm -hmm. this is what we have that nobody else has. Right. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to get it from us. I've been, in, I've been in this business for more than 40 years, and I, you know, at the beginning there was a strict division between reporters and photographers. In fact, I was, I was at a union newspaper, you know, where it was really divided. You know, you weren't allowed to take pictures. But more recently, of course, as we've gone to more online uh, online first and online uh, production. We're all kind of required to be online producers as well as print pr <laughs> print print reporters. So, so we're try we're uh, we're all uh, stretching. <laughs> We're a video first um, shop these days, so and digital first. And so even though I have 40 years of experience doing stills, and my that's where, you know, I know my editors are going to see this, but that's where my heart still is, but I can follow the directive of video first. My heart still says you still have to shoot still photographs. And so that's what I will continue to do, even though it's harder on me, and I won't do still frame grabs from video. Not going to do it while I'm still working. Over my finger clutching the shutter, over my cold, dead finger. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, it's just I take too much pride in both of them, and I just want to do the best job I can. A dumpster fire with the portico of the White House in front of it. So it looks, so it's the White House. A voice balloon saying, we're going to get to the bottom of this debacle. What did the press know and when did it know it? So that's, you know, idea one, which isn't bad. And that's how we start by scribbling. <laughs> or a multi-paneled cartoon of Trump not doing anything for 25 days till the press gets a hold of it. So, a work in progress.
for years we've been looking at problems in the state prisons and um, so we've been reporting episodically about a number of problems from uh, inmates who've been in solitary for more than 10 years, inmates who are dying under suspicious circumstances, uh, inmates who are beaten by guards when they're shackled. Um, um, and now we're kind of taking a more systematic look at corruption in the entire state prison system. And so we're preparing a series of stories about that. The How hard would it he, be if he does place. live in the middle of nowhere? And he's, he's okay. just so you know, he's probably a dangerous guy. Yeah, yeah. So that, right. So yeah. I think probably for a lead image unless, well, mm -hmm. I mean, would, would you be thinking of some kind of frame grab? We're looking at cases in which officers are teaming up with gang leaders in prisons to smuggle in contraband, to plan hits on other inmates. You want to start with the fight? The fight was a good one. Yeah, you can do uh, that one. This one. That's so the, fight right the there. tall white guy is Christopher Cook. He's getting stabbed by two Latino inmates, oh, both gang cool. members right there. That is pretty good, and that's pretty clear. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if we could pull some frames and just see what we think we see. We'll give it a try. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, looking at cases in which officers are systematically beating shackled inmates in parts of the prison that aren't overseen by video cameras so they can get away with it. He's limping because uh, he took a beating from officers after he uh, stabbed Wesley Turner to death. Think about day one, you know, you're thinking about uh, we, the video, of course, is going to be digitally, that's going to be our a great pop there in paper you know what would that be what do we think that would be in day one I, I think we would want to look at this still for, well, for frame grabs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that, that the photos we shot are not necessarily They're on the front and back so. is there anything that says Lanesboro like a sign or anything or, uh, on the place there is we do we have that in another shot I've got but you don't see much prison it's just basically a sign there's so many things in this this reporting that will kind of, I think, stun people, but one of them is that they put these, these guards into place and, and then they start working without any much formal training, right? right? A week or right. something like that. Right. Right. Um, and I know it's about to change, but it hasn't changed at this point. So, so um, I was curious to know if you, it sounds like a recipe for um, a, a bad ending. Uh, We're trying to think through you know, who are the groups we can make sure are aware that this is coming. We're looking at how kind of the, the state uh, prison leaders are just sort of allowing a lot of this to happen. They're not putting in place any checks to prevent a lot of this corruption. This Valentine's Day, PETA wants everyone to know that going vegan can help you go bananas in the bedroom. The cholesterol in meat, dairy, and eggs clogs arteries and slows the flow of blood to all body parts, not just the heart. Um, I'm doing a quick blog piece um, for my blog called uh, What's in Store, and it's basically about openings and closings of retail developments in the area. Um, and that seems to be of interest to people because it's, um, you know, applicable to their day-to-day, -day, where they can shop, where they can go out to eat, um, things like that. So these are pretty straightforward little pieces, and they might appear in print or they might just be online, kind of depending on what the needs are for the day. second thing would be, can we show that if, if in any way um, the president's executive order would affect him? Like. Uh, I think it said something in there. I thought that if you'd been deported before, yeah, you would man, be I'll subject check. to. So it's just nice to mention okay. how we think that would affect him going forward. Okay. Because especially when he talks about his his fear and stuff, it, it seems like it, it whether that's warranted or not. Okay. So I went with the idea of, uh, you know, with Flynn, with Trump being told about Flynn, you know, like weeks ago, and then the, the presser today where, they, where Spicer said that, uh, you know, as soon as we learned about this, we, we acted upon it, but that's, you know, they learned about it weeks ago. So I just wanted to 
convey the sense of inaction. I just kind of thought the same little drawing over and over, you know, flowing through it, showing the passage of time and nothing happening. This sort of the, where I wanted to go with this. So, so this drawing basically involves drawing the same little picture over and over several times. So, I guess I'm, I'm drawing. But I usually sketch out on uh, in pencil. And then I use the slide table and a piece of Bristol board for the final illustration. And then we can kind of, that way I don't have to erase the final cartoon. I don't have to rub out any ink lines or anything. It makes it a lot neater, and plus I get to be a little free every time I draw it. So. Well, you know, what I write about is, um, I like to think of it as growth and the tension and pressures that come with growth. So a lot of it is about, you know, who's building what, the new buildings right, in the city, I'm new developments. Wow. But with that come problems like gentrification, local businesses being pushed out, increasing traffic, uh, pressure on schools and roads. So I try to write about both uh, sides of that, both the positive impact of growth and also um, the pain and uncomfortable um, tensions and pressures that come with growth. Oh, it's my favorite story of the day because it's funny. Somebody went to the trouble of stealing a 1,000 pound, three foot tall statue of a chicken. Why would someone do that? <laughs> That's a yolk. <laughs> back in 1971. I'm going back. I got to find out about this murder because I think it's got something to do with something I'm working on. Descendants of the people. Well, we never throw anything away. So all the unsolved murders from 1971 are in this envelope. And there's a million envelopes. There's a million facts back there. Now, you know, it'll be another hundred years before these completely disintegrate, but you know, somebody dies, I run back there, I find the clips from 1977, find out what they were up to, learn all the stuff. Newspaper never forgets, that's one great thing about it. The history of the town.